Woo! What's going on, guys? Ohms Forum coming at you guys today with another video. And uh, today's video, man, I'm gonna I'm having a bit of a trying to figure out how to start this one off. Um, there was a game Monday night. You guys all know who was in this game. Um, like I don't really know where I'm going with this, but I'm gonna end up somewhere with this. You guys know who this guy is. You guys know who he is. John Matthew Stafford. Better known as just Matt Stafford. Okay. You know who he is. Plays for the LA Rams now. Um, Monday nighter. Playoff game. His fourth playoff game in his in his career. His 13-year career. And he ended up winning the game. The LA Rams did. Got the monkey off his back. All that stuff. Now, this is not necessarily going to be about just strictly Matthew Stafford. Okay? First of all, I want to say congratulations to Matt Stafford and the LA Rams. You know, finally got Matt that, like I said, that monkey off his back. Got that first playoff win on the Tampa Bay. I don't think they're going to beat Tampa Bay. But that's a whole other story. My issue is... My issue, okay, and it's not, this is not a yay Matthew Stafford. This is, this is, I'm happy for him, extremely happy for him. I'm very happy for him because I'm a Matthew Stafford fan. My issue is this organization, the Detroit Lions organization. 12 years we had this guy on our team. 12. They couldn't get him a win. Couldn't get him a playoff win. Three appearances. Was not great in all those three games. Which I uh, I thought he was pretty good in the Saints game. Um, he did throw a couple picks. Uh, I thought he was okay in the Dallas game. But they kind of froze up in the second half of that game. Uh, and he was really bad in the Seattle game. Defense was atrocious. Absolutely zero of a running game. But that's here, neither here nor there. My gripe is with this organization. <clears throat> Big time. Like I said, I'm happy for them. But I'm sad at the same time. And I'm mad. When I was watching that LA game, I was like, okay. Matthew Stafford didn't have to, didn't have to drop back 30, 30 plus times. In his career, he has averaged... Dropping back 33 times. If you go through a game, if you go through his game log, you you know, you you look at all his attempts, you divide this by that, divide it by that, and you know, you go through it. It's come out to about 32.8, round it off, about 33 times a game this man drops back. He's a gunslinger. This is what you got for him. It's also what you get when you don't have a sniff of a running game as a as a Detroit Lion. You know how many times he dropped back in that LA Rams game? 17. 17 times and they won the football game. 14 out of 17 for only 202 yards, two touchdowns out of 76 point, 76% completion percentage. They also ran for 22 yards and a touchdown, one yard plunge. Von Miller, who they picked up, had a great, great game. Six tackles in a sack. Odell Beckham Jr. got his first playoff touchdown. Guy that everybody else wrote off, who has played exceptionally well in L.A., which is it's not a, it's not a coincidence. It's just not a coincidence. He was doing nothing in Cleveland. He was hurt. He's this, he's that. Complaining about Baker, his dad involved, blah, blah, this and all that stuff. He's kind of resurrected his career, too, Odell Beckham Jr., and they have a good club over there now. Like, don't get me wrong. Don't get me That's a good club. Not as good as last year's club, where they had a top-notch running game and a top-notch defense. Okay? But still, it's a good team. 12 years in an organization, and you couldn't get this guy a win, a playoff win. He is one year removed. They win 12 games, win the division, 
It's something he's never done as a Detroit Lion. MVP talks, you won't get it. It'll be either Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers. That's pretty much a lock. You can maybe throw Josh Allen in there too, but I don't think Allen's going to win it either. I think it's going to be Brady or Rodgers. And what else? And a playoff victory. And, a, and finally, the playoff victory. For a guy that bled all over the field for, as a Detroit Lion. You know, and we talk about quarterbacks all the time here. We talk about quarterbacks in media. We talk about quarterbacks as a YouTuber. I talk about them. I think we talk about them a little bit too much. Like, we don't make a big a deal about other guys leaving crappy franchises and going on the win, like Sue, Kyle Van Noy, they all went to greener pastures and won. Left this franchise and won. <clears throat> this is my team. This is why I get upset. This is why I like to make videos. Because I've said it in the past, this is like, almost like talking to a psychiatrist. Making these videos is very therapeutic for me. Very therapeutic. So when I watch the game, I watch, the, I, I watch that Rams game, and I watch Stafford playing very well, not having to do much. They ran the ball exceptionally well. I think, they, I think as a team they ran over 140-something yards. Not one guy had a phenomenal game, but they just, as a group, they ran for over 140, or, I, I believe, or something like that. Played. Great defense, held the uh, Cardinals to like 11 points all over um, Kyler Murray in that defense. They couldn't get nothing done and played great special teams. They had field position all day, punting the ball well. I don't even really know what Matt Gay did, the kicker there. Um, I'm sure he had a few points because they scored some touchdowns, but he didn't have a great, great day as a kicker, but... I don't think he missed anything. And then the punters just had a good day. He was he was uh, pinning the Cardinals back. So they were just all three phases. Running the ball. Throwing the ball. Defense. And then we say four phases. Playing special teams. So offensively, defensively, special teams. Why couldn't we as an organization just do that one time for number nine? Why? It, it bothers me as a fan. This organization, I think, has wasted his talent. Now, I'm not saying that Matthew Stafford is an elite quarterback because I don't think he is. I really don't think he is. I think he's a very good quarterback that got the short end of the stick here. They built, they never could find a running game for him. One time with Reggie Bush and Joyke Bell, and it wasn't even that great. It was ranked like 17th, 18th, or I believe. I think Bush had Bush had a thousand, and Bell had 1500. So it was solid. That, I believe that was the 2013 season. I could be wrong. 2014 was probably the best year that they could have won something. That was the Cowboys game. We can sit there. We can point our fingers at the refs. We can point our fingers at Matthew Stafford because that offense went stale into the third, actually going into that third and, and staying pretty stale in that second half. Defense melted down in the second half. Refereeing, we can always point at the refereeing for that Pettigrew, for that Pettigrew call, where they called the pass interference, then picked it up. We can do all kinds of that stuff. That was probably their best shot at winning a game or two going into the third round was that 2014 season. Other than that, what the hell has this organization ever done? What what have they done? I'm more mad because he was here for 12 years. 12 years. He goes and goes one year gone. And he already gets the division, MVP talks, won a playoff game, throws for 41 touchdowns, throws a bunch of picks though. He did do that. Tied for the league. With Trevor Lawrence, the rookie out of Jacksonville. He has his flaws, 100%. He doesn't need everything to be perfect, but he does need help. 
that my gripe is with this organization. Now, Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell have gotten themselves into a situation, okay? And I'm not even mad at Brad Holmes or Dan Campbell, especially Brad Holmes. Number nine, asked to be traded. He's like, I want out. I was here for 12 years. I'm not, I don't want to be part of a build or a rebuild, a retool, whatever the hell we're calling this. It just drives me nuts. He didn't want to be a part of it. Marvin Jones, Jamal Agnew, uh, Danny Amendola, Kenny Galladay shipped to New York. Total rebuild. Get rid of Jamie Collins a few games in. Everything. Okay? This organization is pus. But it's my team. So as, as a guy like Brad Holmes and Dan Cable, they need to take this personally. Not because I think it's their fault, which I don't. Because he wanted out. But this is a kick in the balls, if I've ever seen one. Him winning a playoff game one year removed. Yes, he went to a good team, but that wasn't a very, that wasn't the 2020 Rams. They've, they've gone through some things. They've gone through some bumps in the road and offensively. They've gone through some bumps in the road defensively. Gone through some injuries, like everybody else has. That's not that 2020 Rams team where Goff had everything in front of him, which they should have won. My whole thing is Brad Holmes has to take this personally. This organization has to take this personally. We know that, you know, rest in peace, William Clay Ford. He never gave a damn. Martha doesn't even know where she is, okay? Sorry, but she like, she didn't she didn't care. Sheila, no idea. I hope she was watching that game and saying, my God, we couldn't do this for, you know, we had 12 years, not just one. We had 12 years to do something and win something with this quarterback. A good quarterback, a really good quarterback that can make every throw that you want to make. But he has flaws. I won't sit here and just say it. He is blameless for 12 years because he does take a ton of blame. He has to. He's the quarterback. That's just the way it is. They didn't do enough for him. They didn't. And now everyone's going to be like, oh, Mark, look at you, man. Backing up number nine. Like he's your little brother. All this, blah, blah, this and that. I don't care. I was happy for the guy. But I was also sad at the same time for my organization because I bleed Honolulu blue and silver. I bleed it. And then just watching that and just going, of course, one year out, bound, going to the playoffs, you're playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the second round. And they have a shot, but I don't think they're going to win. But who knows what's going on? Tampa Bay's a little banged up. Uh, Rams are banged up. That's, that's a whole other video. My whole problem is this organization and this guys like Brad, Brad Holmes and Dan Miller, they're invested. You got six years and you got five-year deals. Do something now, man. You have to build on this. Take it personal. Because I know I'm taking it personal. I, I'm taking it really personal. I hate the fact that this fan base, this fan base, we are, we are so special. Bullet down the middle when it comes to Matthew Stafford, that it, it's toxic. It's absolutely toxic. We go after each other's throats like I've never ever seen. You either hate the dude or you love the dude. And I'm on the side of where I love him. I thought he was done wrong here. And I'll continue to say that. And it was proven he was done wrong here. He only had to drop back 17 times. In that LA Rams game. Go, go to his game logs and his career. Guess how many times he had to do that in his career? 17 times in a win. I'll give you a guess. It's zero. There's your guess. It's zero. I'll save you that. He averaged 33 times drop back a game. Now, a lot of quarterbacks might have that. He's a gunslinger. But like I said, in a winning effort 17 times... All three phases of the game, 
LA Rams did it. She was cool and comfortable out there. I was just watching this game and I was just like, I've never seen anything like this. Like, we didn't see any of this for 12 years. And now we see it year one as an LA Ram. And it screwed up our draft pick. Sure. We could have got the 23rd overall draft pick from the LA Rams 2022 pick. We could have got that 23rd pick overall. Now we fell to 28. Some things could happen. We could shoot up to 26, I guess. But we're we're going to be stuck around from 26 to 32. I don't think we're going. I don't think. Uh, I don't think the Rams are going to the Super Bowl at all. I don't. Could they? Who knows? I don't think they're going to get by Tampa. They're going to get by Green Bay, Green Bay, San Francisco. It's going to be tough. But if you sat there as a Lions fan, if you did sit there as a Lions fan and you thought that we were going to get a high draft pick from the LA Rams, at least in year one, I don't know what to tell you. I really don't know what to tell you. And I'm sorry if you thought that. I'm trying to be nice here. I'm really sorry if you thought that. Like, I thought for sure we were going to be picking 25 and beyond, 24, whatever. And it looks like right now we're stuck at 28. It could change. I think Green Bay needs to lose. Rams need to lose. And I think we can shoot up to 26. I think that's the best we can get now at, at this point. That can all change. My whole gripe is just the organization is just... It's a complete letdown of not only Matt. And I talked earlier about Sue, Vianoi, Quandre Diggs going off to have a be- better teams. Darius Slay. All those guys having better success. Better organizations. This has got to be... Getting, th- th- this I'm sick and tired of this. I'm done with this crap. They need to take this personal. Brad, even though he was never a part of Slay... Sue, all those guys. It's time to start taking it personal. It's the only way it's things are going to get done. It's the only way. I not, want nothing but success for this organization. Nothing but success. And when you see this happening with a guy that bled on the damn field for 12 years as a quarterback and got dragged through the mud by the media, dragged through the mud by the fan base, and I thought it was completely unjust. This got the monkey off his back. And he has probably given the middle finger up to everybody in Detroit. But he's not that type of guy. I don't know if it was me. Fingers would be up to everyone. I'd be saying in an interview. I'd be, I, I, I would just, I would lay in to the Detroit fan base, media, whoever was listening. But he ain't that type of guy. I don't know. He's just not that type of guy. Me, I am. You'd be, get, you'd be getting it from all angles. Every single angle possible. I just want this organization to take this serious. Please, man. I beg Brad Holmes. I beg Dan Campbell. When they were watching this game, I hope they had a fire in them. And they couldn't help it. Like I said, Stafford wanted gone. But you're invested. You're, you're six years One guy's got five, one guy's got six. You're tied to the hip. Do something, Brad Campbell. Do something, Brad Campbell. Do something, Brad Holmes. Do something, Dan Campbell. It's time. It it's time. I'm just sick of it all. I'm I'm sick of seeing it. I'm sick of seeing all these guys build building up better resumes and better and like getting better teams. And we're just getting dumped on. Like crap in a brown paper bag thrown against the wall. You ever seen the movie Can't Buy Me Love? You ever seen that movie where Buddy throws the crap in the bag? You asked on my house, man. You asked on my house. Remember that when he says that to his buddy in the in the arcade? Can't Buy Me Love. Patrick Dempsey, I believe it was. Great film. Great film. Just do something, Brad Holmes. Do something, please. Take this personal. That's all I want. To say, thanks for the video, guys. That's it. Woo. Hit the, don't forget to hit the uh, subscribe button on, on the bottom right. Don't forget the notification bell and uh, like and comment all my videos. 
It's have at her. Boom.